Everyone likes giving something away for free if it helps them get a sale, but does that work over the long term? Julia Campbell is founder of JC Social Marketing, and welcome to the Language of Business. Thank you, Craig. I'm happy to be here. You do lots of work with nonprofits. Mm -hmm. How does that generate any income for you? Well, nonprofits are willing to pay if they feel they can get a return on their investment. So what I found is that they are willing to pay if they can see results pretty quickly. But is that going to generate enough money over the long term compared with for-profits? Absolutely. So I've had my business for about seven years. I started working with small businesses and then I graduated to working with small mid-level nonprofits and I do marketing, consulting, strategic consulting and sometimes grant writing, online fundraising for them. They often find that rather than hiring a full-time marketing person or social media person, it's often better to bring someone in for the short term but solely non-profit as opposed to for-profit? Well, I'm not opposed to working with for-profits. I just find that my passion is non-profits. It's my background, it's what I'm familiar with, and it's what I'm good at. So I like to focus on non-profit. And based on the research for this interview, you've done a lot of work in Senegal. Yes, so I worked in Senegal with the US Peace Corps from 2000 to 2002, and I have worked with a lot of nonprofits focusing on African presidents, African issues, so. You also give a lot of books away for free. How does that factor into your business model? Well, I think that the more you give away for free, it's going to sound kind of cheesy almost, but the more you put out in the universe, the more you get back. So I write a blog for free, I do a lot of webinars for free, and I give away eBooks. And what I find is that it helps cement me as a thought leader and an influencer, and it helps me grow my social media following and my email list if I'm giving something away for free and requiring an email, and then I can make that stronger connection for longer term um, relationships. So I find that giving stuff away for free really does end up bringing in money in the long term if you think big picture longer term. Do you have a set conversion ratio for every 10 emails that you send, oh. how many people tend to hire you? I should, absolutely, because that's what I do consulting around, but it's sort of the cobbler who has no shoes. I haven't figured that out for myself yet. I do it very holistically and very organically, so I recently started charging for webinars and doing paid webinars and paid speaking engagements, whereas previously I'd done it for free. But I do think that doing things for free, other than consulting for years, really helped build my brand and help people find me and help people sort of sign up for my list and follow me on Twitter and really built my audience that I could now call on when I'm selling a product. So I wrote a book and after building this audience for years and years and years, I'm now able to promote my book to them and I have an audience that's ready, willing, and able to hopefully purchase it. Have you found attendance has been better for a free webinar versus a paid webinar? Absolutely. So on a free webinar, you're going to see upwards of 500 people, um, depending on who's promoting it, depending on who I'm partnering with to do it. So usually 100, 150, you can have upwards of 500, depending on your software. The thing with free webinars and giving, you know, it's called freemium, giving these sure. things away for free, is that the quality of, or the quality of the leads is often very low. So if you are charging for a webinar, even just $15 or $20, those people are going to ask better questions, they're going to be more connected, they're probably going to be more willing to download the materials, to contact you afterwards. So I find that even with the paid webinars, those people tend to turn into longer term clients than on the free webinars, and that's fine. I mean, you have to do a mix of both, I think. So much of effective marketing is reading people's social cues yes. or their facial expressions. How can you be that great at your job if you're doing so much online? That's a very good question because I work for myself. I work in an office. I like being alone. Um, people would be surprised to learn that I'm somewhat of an introvert. I really enjoy my alone time. But I love also getting out once in a while and going to conferences. I'm going to a conference very soon in Portland, Maine, and that energizes me too. So I don't think you can take away, you can never take away that in-person connection, that in-person networking, those in-person events, especially with nonprofits, 
because so much of what they do is cultivating these long-term relationships with people that are going to be funding them. And businesses do that too, cultivating relationships with customers. You absolutely need a good mix of digital marketing and in-person phone calls and meetings, 100%. I would never, that's never going to go away. Julia, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Julia Campbell, founder of jcsocialmarketing.com.